Hello, welcome to Organized Chaos Fall 2020. We've missed you this year. We've missed you at the Trades Expo, the barbecue, and we haven't even been able to invite you into our shop. And so we brought this video to you in order to invite you into the shop a little bit more. And we think you've probably missed us a little bit too. At Organized Chaos, we exist to apprentice young people in life and trade inspiring hope and purpose, creating a safe environment for young people to work and learn alongside tradespeople from local churches. We're gonna start with one of those mentors, Dave Dreger over at his shop right now. Hey, we made our way over to Dave Dreger's house where if you share this video and tag Organized Chaos, you're entered to win this cutting board made by Mr. Dave Dreger and we're gonna hear from him now. Hi, my name is Dave Dreger, and uh, I have to tell you, uh, I've been with OK for over two years, and uh, I want to share some of my experiences with you today. Um, people often ask me, why do you bother with these kids at this stage of your life? I just had my 80th birthday, which I was uh, blessed to have. And I got to tell you, uh, there's lots of reasons uh, these kids are a great motivator for me, and I learn more from them than I think they learn from me. However, when I was younger, I had a man who was a mentor to me, and I will never forget some of the lessons that he taught me. Uh, and one of them was, he told me one day, look, Dave, if you have something to say, say it, because you may never get the chance again. And so that's part of the reason why I'm here. I think these kids uh, have been a real inspiration to all of us. They come in, you see them over the months and years get better and better at what they do. In the end, they will be equipped uh, to have an advantage in the job market. And we hope that in the process, we're able to give them some moral guidelines and some uh, good life stuff to take with them. I happen to be involved right now with uh, teaching or mentoring uh, two kids in wood turning and I think uh, we've just had a wonderful time. I think they're probably both enjoying it as much as I am. And when I see them do a job and, and finish it and, and, and see that they were capable of doing this, uh, it's really a, a, a good feeling. They feel good about it. I feel even better about it. And I'm proud of these kids. After a while, these kids become my kids. And uh, I really appreciate the fact that I've been allowed to have a part in this. Every once in a while, something happens that kind of adds the icing to the cake. And I told a story to my two students about uh, my shop is on the second floor and a hummingbird flew into the shop just recently and wouldn't leave and I couldn't get it out of the, the shop. I tried for a couple of hours and finally gave up. I told the story to my students. By the way, the hummingbird finally did get out. Uh, and the next week when I came in, one of them had made a beautiful uh, leaded glass uh, hummingbird about six inches tall. And it was really a beautiful piece of work and gave it to me. And it, to me that signified that these people were showing they trusted us. Um, and I 
that it, it affected me uh, uh, to think that she would take a couple of hours, five hours, six hours, I don't know how long, to make this thing when she didn't have to. One of the things we do at OK, before every session we have a little uh, uh, program called Shop Talk. And it's a time of about 15 or 20 minutes when we can talk about personal things, we can talk about spiritual things, we can talk about uh, lots of different topics. And it's interesting to see the kids opening up and getting more involved and uh, uh, asking more questions. And we hope that in the process of uh, being there with them that they might learn first off to trust us, which I know they do at this point, and secondly, to confide in us and let us help them where we might be able to help. Um, I can remember having those experiences with my mentor and um, it was uh, something that helped me through many, through the rest of my life actually. I still follow some of the things that he taught me. I first heard about organized chaos from a friend of mine who attended the same church I did. And uh, the idea intrigued me, and when I found out more about it, uh, I thought, what a wonderful way to, uh, to um, reach out and, and work with these young people. And I want to tell you, uh, I think Organized Chaos is a very uh, supportable and very viable and uh, wonderful uh, mission. It is a mission. It involves hard work, it involves dedication, uh, and uh, like it or leave it, there's times when it might be pretty tough going, but it's always worthwhile. So, in closing, I just want to say this is, uh, for me, a good time in my life. I've got a chance to work with these kids, to see them progress, to see them succeed, and uh, I hope that when we are finished with this, that we have kids that are capable, not only in their trade, but capable in their personal lives. And by that I mean that they have learned to accept the principles of Christianity that we teach, that we wish to teach and we wish to see them accept. At Organized Chaos, we have something called a rewards program, where after 25 hours, we equip students with a tape measure, 50 hours, a, a speed square, 100 hours, a utility knife, and it keeps going. 150 hours, a hammer, and it just keeps going after that. And we continue to equip students for the career that they're going into. It has two main purposes, physically equipping students, but also we want to move uh, relationships into lifelong relationships, because we don't just give the students these tools. Students meet their mentors at the local hardware store, buy the tool together, and then continue on the conversation at a coffee shop. And so we want these relationships to be lifelong. With that, we get to record the students' hours in the shop. Last year in September, I was able to tell you that we had 1,860 hours in the shop, student hours in the shop. This year, from June to June, I can tell you that we had 1,816. Now, that seems like less, but that's because we got cut short, as you know. Uh, we got cut three and a half a month short of our prime student hours, and we were on track to be close to 2,500 student hours in the shop last year, and it would have been really cool to see. Now, we get to also have graduation uh, for the students that age out of organized chaos, and the first one with 126 hours is Andrew Alkama, who we'll hear from next. Andrew was one of my first students in, in, in woodworking. Uh, he's uh, very gun ho on learning. He wanted to learn everything and anything in any trade he could, could possibly learn. <clears throat> he was very hard working. Him and Ben made partnerships together and whenever uh, Andrew slowed down or got a little sloppy, I just say, Ben did that job real nice and everything improved quickly or I say the same to Ben. But uh, so they made quite a team and really wanted to learn everything. Uh, Andrew, uh, Andrew's now uh, gone into uh, mentorship uh, 
teaching electrical, um, and I'd like to present this plaque. Thank you. Thank you for the skills I've learned. I am part of the electrical team, and I plan on pursuing electrical as a career. Thank you. Like what you just saw with Andrew and Gord, uh, we were looking forward to sh handing the plaques over to many other students at our barbecue this year, but like many things, we, that had to change. At Organized Chaos, when a student turns 18, uh, it doesn't stop for them, but it does mean a change in what's going on with Organized Chaos. Uh, they, they are no longer part of our typical programs, but we continue to connect with them outside of Organized Chaos. That said, we have nine students graduating this year, uh, and we are so excited to send them off, and I just want to acknowledge each one of them to you guys uh, here today. And so, we have Keegan Droulard with 261 hours in our shop, whose main mentor was Reg Ketty. We have uh, Nathan Palmerton, with 185 and a half hours in our shop, whose main mentor was Brian Knowles. And you already know about Andrew Elkema. And these three, uh, collectively, when they're done school, are already uh, looking to mentor at Organized Chaos in the near future. We also have Colin, who's graduating with 57 and a half hours, who worked alongside Jacob. We have Cole, who's graduating with 51 hours, who worked alongside Gord again. We have Hero, we have Cameron, we have Keegan Zietzma, and we have Corbin, all of which are graduating Organized Chaos this year, and we wish them the best of luck as they move into their careers. Let's move over to Don Thompson's shop, where we're gonna hear about his perspective on Organized Chaos as a mentor. Hello, my name is Don Thompson. I've been asked to give some thoughts on my part in Organized Chaos. I've known Will Dyer for many years, and he's always been somewhat reserved. Overnight, he became a radiant, bubbly, full of enthusiasm person for this group called Organized Chaos. I needed to find out more. I soon found myself as a mentor at Organized Chaos. My first memory of walking into a room of enthusiasm enlivened youth was fear. As I watched and listened, that quickly faded. We talked about God and personal issues and concerns. In a quiet time, I asked, why do you come here? And a few minutes, someone offered, we feel safe. It's quite the scene, all the youth and mentors working on various projects. Lamps, swords, clocks, bookshelves, trays, candle holders, to name a few, and Christmas float decorations. Watching the youth take the chance to learn and grow is an awesome feeling. The prize shown in the projects done, the freedom to explore and create, the deep commitment of all the mentors to the youth, the fun and joy of helping each other. Through working with Chris and Luke, I've grown as I believe they have too. Together we've learned to create, build, fix, and finish. Their sense of achievement is priceless. In this time of challenge with the virus and all that, um, I've been able to uh, spend time playing Scrabble with Carissa and taking things over for her to cut out and do. In the future, um, I plan on staying in a good relationship with uh, Chris and Luke and be there for them no matter what may. And at this time, I'm trying to provide things for them to do um, at home. And uh, we'll continue to communicate and see what happens. My name is Keith and uh, I'm the father of Keegan and Carter Drulard. Uh, Keegan started with Organized Chaos uh, back when, I think, maybe about three years ago and um, met Sean and Melissa and uh, he is now a graduate. Uh, 
He's teaching me things. He made me a beautiful cross for Christmas. Um, I wouldn't have any. I wouldn't know where to begin uh, with woodworking. Um, his brother became fascinated with this and um, joined. Uh, Carter joined when he was 13. Uh, the boys really enjoy going away on the, uh, the getaways that uh, Sean organizes. They love the uh, camaraderie. Um, they're learning lots about uh, Christ, which is. Uh, really good thing for them to develop um, and to grow into. Um, going back to Keegan for a second, he's now a graduate uh, from Organized Chaos, we'll call it, and off to St. Clair College. He didn't really know what he wanted to do for uh, work and uh, he was accepted into the HVAC program at St. Clair College, so he started in year one there. Carter is, to my amazement, from his first year until now, is, is learning uh, more and more and developing. And again, he is showing me things and which way the screwdriver is supposed to be held. Um, I find that uh, when he's home, uh, and I'm not just saying this because I'm on camera, but uh, that he listens better than what he did before. Uh, the question that uh, I ask him is often not just what would Sean say or think, and that gets them thinking again, but what would Jesus do? And uh, so I look forward to uh, seeing him develop in his uh, skills uh, with organized chaos. Uh, proud of both the boys and uh, what they've accomplished and uh, quite frankly what Sean has accomplished. Carter now has a mentor, Brian, um, who has taken Carter uh, shopping the Canadian Tire when he reaches a certain level. Um, Brian's always interested in Carter. In fact, uh, because the church has been closed, uh, when we've had uh, prayer in the backyard or music at the church, Brian has made a, uh, an effort to walk over just to see how Carter was doing. Carter wasn't sitting outside with us at the time, but just to say that he was sorry and he missed him and uh, that, you know can't wait to get back together, which was uh, you know really nice to see. And I passed that message on to Carter and you know just brought a little smile to his face. So. Uh, Carter looks forward to being with Brian now and was excited when Brian uh, was his mentor for, uh, we'll call it the 2020 season at Organized Chaos. I'm here with Carter at the shop. I've known Carter for a while now as his older brother used to come to Organized Chaos. And Carter's been coming here for almost a year now. And let's hear from Carter. What have you been working on? Well, uh, in the past I've built a spoon, spatula, and a little three-legged stool that I use at my desk. But right now I'm working on a little, uh, well actually, an outdoor folding chair with Brian. So Brian, you've been working with Brian the most then? Yeah, I've been working with him since I started Organized Chaos around a year ago. Okay. So tell me a little bit uh, about Brian. Like, what is your favorite quality about Brian? Well, Brian is amazing. He's, very, he's super understanding whenever, if I mess up a cut or... Do, mess, uh, do something wrong in a project, he'll show me how to fix it and he'll help it. Awesome. Yeah. That's good to hear. Uh, so, sounds like you've been having fun here. Mm -hmm. uh, tell me about, tell me about a funny story that's been happening, that's happened at the shop here. Oh, that, that's an easy one. Ha Halloween 2019, my first Halloween here, we had a pumpkin carving contest and we can use any tool in the shop, any machine, whatever we feel like. That could get interesting. The blowtorch was super fun for me, my first time. <laughs> but one student decided to use the lathe, which didn't end very well. Uh, <laughs> chunks of pumpkin flew everywhere. By the end of the night, I was still picking little chunks of pumpkin out of my hood. Did this pumpkin stay intact? Oh, no, absolutely not. Oh. It was completely destroyed. <laughs> <laughs> all right, all right. So. Uh, 2019, so that's pro right near when you started. Yeah. Um, so tell me, tell me how you feel now coming into the shop compared to your first day coming into the shop. Well, on my first day, if you, you, if I could name a machine if you paid me to, mm -hmm. like I, I just didn't know anything. So, but coming in now, it just everything is just another home, almost another place that I come to that's super familiar. It's been. Super cool seeing you coming here over the last year. And just, as you said, you didn't know anything about the tools when you walked in, but I can tell, um, well, we had a new student you were working with last week, and I could tell that you working alongside him, you were able to show him things. And 
Uh, I've also seen you and Brian working together. So uh, I, I know that you and Brian have talked even outside of Organized Chaos and that uh, it's really cool to see how you and Brian have worked so well together in, in not, not only building the projects, but just getting to know each other. It's been great seeing uh, Carter and Brian getting to know each other in the shop, but Carter is just one of many students working alongside their, their mentors, working directly, getting to know each other in the trades and also in life. As we've kept the ratio of one tradesperson working with two students at a time, that was done on purpose so life and trade could happen. 2020 has been a year of mixed feelings, both personally and for organized chaos. Personally, I've been a farmer for the last 10 years. And as of last year, this year combined, uh, I've decided to stop farming. And that comes with mixed feelings because I loved aspects of farming, but now I have more time for my family and more time for organized chaos. Also, the biggest change in my life in 2020 hasn't been COVID. Uh, uh, Melissa and I introduced Tobias into the world, our first child this year. And so as much as that comes with joy and excitement, it has mixed feelings because we haven't been able to have him cuddled by family and friends and visit the same as we would in uh, a normal year. And for Organized Chaos, we were, have been so excited about what has been happening at Organized Chaos over, over uh, 2020 and the last part of 2019. But it came with mixed feelings as everything we were doing seemed to be cut short. Uh, Last year, September last year at our barbecue, I stood up on stage and told you about how we had a plan to be more effective and more efficient over the next year. We started making new changes in, in that in mind. And the biggest change we made was moving all our programs to semester long. And so our, our programs before that were eight weeks at a time. So we do eight weeks of framing and then move on to a different program. The problem with that was it takes longer than eight weeks in order to get to know somebody sometimes. And it, you're, uh, you're at the beginning of the eight weeks and you're like, what's your name? And we don't we want to start in with every eight weeks with what's your name again. We want to get to know these students on a deep level. And we get there by the time eight weeks come around, comes around sometimes, but we just get there. And so a semester long allows us to start to get to know what's going on at home, what's going on at school, what's going on internally for them. Not only that, we get to know uh, them in the trades better. We don't have to reteach terminology and uh, how to use stuff safely. And we know our students at that point. We know we can send them to cut this piece on the miter saw. And therefore we can take our level in the training of the trades to a deeper level as we work with these students ongoingly. And so we took that same concept and we capitalized on it. We not only did semester long, we now have the students have the first right to sign up with their mentor again the next semester. And so we're moving students from semester to semester in with their same mentor. And because we know the longer they're with the mentor, the deeper their mentorship is in life and trade. Uh, now we introduced those, those concepts those, those models, most of them in January. The auto started a little bit earlier, but mostly in January. And so we got cut short when March came along. We were only seven weeks in to this new, uh, new concept when COVID hit on, when we shut down on March 16th. That said, we could see the difference already in the mindset of both the students and the mentors. There was, a mindset shift because they knew that that was their student and the students know that that was their mentor. They were going to be together for a long time. Uh, they had the right to be together for a long time. And so automatically the relationship was different. It wasn't, I'm going to see you for the next few weeks and then I'm never going to see you again. It's we're together. We're doing this together. We're building together. Um, and then we were, then we were shut down, but, being shut down didn't mean organized chaos stopped. We continued to work with students in different ways. We started out by trying to teach trades online through YouTube, through Zoom, different methods like that. In, 
and in different forms using those technologies. And for the most part, they failed. Um, they failed for a variety of reasons. Uh, it, it wasn't something that was going to be scalable across our mentor, uh, mentors and across our students. It just wasn't going to work. And therefore, we moved into something a little bit different. We moved into having a Zoom hangout every week in, for both auto and, uh, and carpentry separately. And so we had fun. We did a shop talk, which was a discussion about faith and life. We had breakout sessions to continue to continue those relationships with the students. And so a breakout session, the student and the mentor would, would get away on Zoom and be able to have a conversation for 15 minutes uh, before we moved back in to have fun. And it was to continue those relationships in order to bring them back in this semester, September again, where all the students re-signed up to be with their same mentor. We didn't lose a single student uh, because of that. And therefore, the relationships that were started in January now are continuing in September, October, November, December, and maybe keep on going. Everything added up to being more intentional with the students. And that led to our exciting hire of Dave Van Coot. <laughs> uh, Dave, Dave took the role of Director of Mentorship, where he is going to be leading, appreciating, and coordinating our mentor team, our, our very valuable mentor team. Well, and on that note too, one of the coolest things about Organized Chaos is the the level of care that each one of the mentors has for the students. I think Sean mentioned that, that they built these relationships up. They've established long-term real relationships and I'm just happy to be a part of what's going on at Organized Chaos, being able to push and motivate and be able to move these men and women forward as they continue to teach the, the youth about skills, but also to help the mentors realize and understand their role in teaching the gospel message. Man, has it been a privilege getting to know all of the mentors here. I've been like a fly on the wall the last three weeks. During, uh, during the shop, I've been able to get to know all of the different mentors, trying to see who they are, their styles in teaching, and the way that they kind of relate to their youth. I really liked going in on, on Mondays, watching them frame up a shed. You got Gord cutting bird's, uh, bird's mouths, teaching it. He's, he's the kind of guy who's able to patiently explain what he wants done and to do it in such a way that the youth get it. You got Jacob, who is kind of the life of the party. He's yelling across the shop. He's making jokes, but he's, he gets down to work. And uh, these kids really, the youth really love his enthusiasm. Sam, I haven't gotten to know him fully yet, but he is, he's dedicated. I can see that he's working hard. He's behind the camera right now. I really appreciate all the work he's done in getting these videos together. It's been, it's been a privilege getting to know all of those guys so far. Tuesday, you get to see all of the intricate stuff that they're building. You've got OK Create. You got Dave Dreger working. He's teaching wood turning. He has been, um, helpful to me. He's actually taught me a little bit more about the skills that are involved with wood turning. He is a teacher at heart. Basically, he gives of his time for the ability to, to teach youth and even young men like myself a little bit more about what is interesting to him. But he's sold out for the gospel message and it's been awesome to, to see him interact and share about his life. Uh, Reg has also been involved in teaching the electrical he teaches at Conestoga now even too, but he has been involved with teaching these youth a little bit more about how to wire up a house with the help of Andrew as well. And those two have been able to work together to bring the, the youth to um, past superficiality into real conversations. Bruce is the kind of guy that is trying to give these youth skills that they can hold on to and allow them to build things that they can see, practical things that they can use in their own lives as well as things around the shop that might actually, they can point to and say, hey, I created that, I made that, and it's helping all of these people out. Uh, I look at all of the guys, Wednesdays, that weird kind of meld of auto and carpentry, and I've seen Will, he's a stand-up guy. I was chatting with him even before I started work here, and he is the kind of guy who uh, is able to easily 
teach skills, but also sit down in a car and get to know the youth that he's, he's mentoring. Even taking time away from the busy schedule that they have, the things that they're trying to take out of the car, the new parts they're trying to put in, he's okay with just sitting down and just starting a conversation. Randy has been involved. Randy David has been um, an active participant in it too. He is basically there to help Will as a, an assistant, but also he's there as, a, um, as someone who is humble and willing to build into the lives of these youth. Uh, Randy Sr., he's, he's, a, he's a guy who's sought out for the gospel, sold out completely, who wants to teach the youth and to be a part of their lives. He is the kind of guy who will, will sit and talk and share about his own life, sharing the things that he struggled through, the, the things that he's gone through, but also pointing it back at his own faith and how he's been changed and transformed through the power of the gospel. And uh, you got Dave Tuttle too. He is, at first, okay, at first he's a little bit intimidating. He's got the giant beard, you know, he is, He's so knowledgeable, he knows what he's talking about, but I've seen him on break get to talking with the youth and asking them about a little bit about what's going on at school with the changes, being with um, going from having multiple classes down to one class. He is, he's dedicated in his way of caring for the youth and trying to be a part of their lives. Larry is a skilled craftsman. I've seen his work, he is, he does amazing work by the way. He's got a dresser inside of Organized Chaos that I've looked at every time and I'm, I'm drooling at it because I almost, I almost want to get it myself. Larry, Larry breaches these kids. He, he builds these relationships with the kids too. Brian is, uh, uh, is trying to teach them a little bit more about the different intricate carpentry skills. For example, he's building this chair set up, something that he saw at a, uh, about 40 years ago something that he made a sample of and he's teaching the youth how to make it themselves. They were turning pennies into corrosive resistant washers the other day. And it was actually a really cool thing. I, I had never known that you could, you could do that. I didn't even know people who still had pennies because they're all gone now. But um, Thursday, the, the, those guys at the, the wood shop, they're also turning out um, different intricate things. You got you got Ted who is, well, when I've seen him, he's been the life of the party. He chats, he talks, he, he's also teaching at Conestoga. So he was telling me all about the different ways he's building the life of young men, which is also applicable to the ways that he's building into these, the youth that are there. Dave Hislop is, is a part of, I don't know, I've seen him. Dave is, an, is a cool guy because he's down to earth, humble. He's able to chat with, with the students that are, that are working with him. I saw them build an Adirondack chair, or sorry, a Muskoka chair up here, and not an Adirondack, Adirondack chair, a Muskoka chair, but I saw him do that and teach these skills and kind of, he was able to lead and instruct them, but he also kind of asked them what they wanted to do and push them forward, getting them to use the bandsaw and, and it, was, it was great. Don Thompson's another guy that is, is playing a role in the youth's lives. Unfortunately, Don has kind of stepped back from Organized Chaos, but he's still playing a role in the two youth's lives that he's a part of. He actually hired one over the summer and she was able to help him with the things that he does, so he's an engraver. And it's a really neat story. If you ever get the chance, talk to him about it. Antal and Lisa at the auto shop, those two are solid, sold out believers in Jesus and hearing them talk about their faith and talk about the experiences they've gone through in their lives is actually Something that's inspired my own faith too. Antal will be there. He'll be talking about his struggles, how God has kind of changed him, and, and, and it's really reassuring to see him and his own journey. We got uh, Alistair, who ha has been working with a student named Ben, who has been actively a part of, their lo of his life. Unfortunately, Ben hasn't come back, um, but... He is still going to be involved with OK, and I've seen him. I actually met him for the first time on Thursday, and he has, he has a passion and a skill, or a passion to teach these youth, a specific skill in body work. And uh, last mentor I want to kind of highlight is, is Caleb. Caleb Haynes, he's been, um, he's been working at Ford, but he's actually giving up his time to come in and spend time with the youth. 
he's been able to actually break down. Um, I think he said it best last Thursday. He's trying to go from the superficiality that, that normally comes about in youth group meetings to being um, able to stoke conversation that's real and to create real relationships. In fact, you guys will probably hear about his relationship with his youth, Isaac. Uh, those two are, it's cool to be around them as they work on the cars and they chat and they talk about, you know, the latest game or something that Isaac enjoys playing. And he, Caleb has been able to kind of build this barrier, build this bridge between Isaac and himself. And uh, I think he's, he's been doing a great job. Like I said at the beginning, the mentors are top notch in what they do. These men and women are building into the lives of these youth. They're taking time out of their day to, to spend time with them. And although we have no idea what tomorrow is gonna bring, that's all in the hands of God. We, I know that these, these mentors are gonna continue those relationships, continue to build into the, the youth. I think it's awesome what they did over the summer with Zoom. I think it's awesome that they continue to have those relationships and whatever comes about this next year these men and women are going to be sold out for teaching these youth and they're also going to be sold out on bringing these youth to to see jesus as their lord and savior i can't think of a better group of men and women and i've served in different ministry capacities before and these volunteers are are top notch in their fire in their passion in their ability to teach and lead and uh, I'm looking forward to what the year brings. So good morning. I um, uh, just wanted to talk to you, share a bit about my experience with organized chaos. So. Um, I have a son who at the time was 12 and um, I'd heard about organized chaos through our church, Central Baptist, and also I had some friends that were making dinners for this organized chaos group, uh, which was carpentry. Um, but my son was really interested in mechanics and he was only 12, year old, 12 years old at the time. And so I got myself on the email distribution list because uh, I'm a real planner and really like to know what's going on. So I was able to watch and see the registrations come to light. And so my son has a birthday in August. So as soon as he turned 13, I watched for that auto mechanics because I knew the program had already started. So I watched for that email come out and I was so excited. I booked uh, my son in for the Wednesday and I double booked him. I booked him for the Thursday night because I saw there was two classes and then I emailed Sean I said I really like the Thursday night because Wednesday nights our youth program at church uh, so Isaac was super excited and from the very first day that he went to uh, the mechanics program he really loved it um, he has a mentor Caleb Haynes and uh, he just um, uh, really uh, enjoys the time that he spends with Caleb. He's super excited when it comes to a Thursday uh, to come to program. He's got his organized chaos sweatshirt out and he's got a camo headband he wears. He's got his own little sort of attire for that night. Um, and he's always anxious to go. Um, he really enjoys the time that he spends uh, with um, uh, the mentors that are there, but particularly Caleb. There was a time frame where uh, there was talk that Caleb wouldn't be able to make a Thursday and would have to change to a Wednesday night. So I discussed that with Isaac. He goes, oh, I don't really want to miss youth, but if it means I have to go, you know, on Wednesday to be with Caleb, I'll change. <laughs> so, um, but it worked out that Caleb was able to maintain the, the Thursdays. And uh, so I noticed that uh, Isaac's um, excited, he's uh, disciplined, he really uh, enjoys being with Caleb and the time he spends there and um, talks very fondly um, about uh, Thursday nights. Um, and uh, he just, he's so excited about the fact that now that he's with Caleb, that he, Caleb is his for the duration. And he knows that um, he's just uh, turned 14, that he's got four more years with Caleb and he just, uh, um, uh, is super excited. We look forward to the continued development of uh, that that friendship and that relationship. And uh, so, um, 
As parents, we're super pleased with the program and what it uh, has done for Isaac and I think how it's helped him be uh, focusing is hard for him. So when he focuses on a task, uh, we're just uh, glad to see him be so interested in something and so taken up by it. Um, so, and I think uh, a lot has to do with uh, Caleb and um, the program that's put in place and the, and the discipline that's there. So. I'm here with Isaac over at the auto shop. And Isaac, how long have you been coming to the auto shop? A year. A year? Uh, that's actually the entire time Organized Chaos has had this auto shop open. Isaac's been with us. Okay, so Isaac, tell us, tell us who have you been working with here? Caleb. Caleb? So. And Ben. And Ben. Who, who's Ben? Ben's uh, the other kid that's my uh, f uh, friend. Cool. Cool. And so tell me a little bit about Caleb. Like, what's. What do you think about Caleb? How do you like working with him? Uh, he respects me. He likes uh, what I do. He knows that I have ADHD and that um, he knows that I like to fiddle with things and he lets me start engines. So. <laughs> cool. So what are some of the jobs that you've done here? Like what have you done on cars? Uh, change tires, oil change, um, brakes, um, ground transmission. We had to replace a wire in a Honda CRV, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. like a Honda Civic. Mm -hmm. And that was the first car we actually worked on. How, how'd that car go? Did you get it done? Yes. Cool. That's, that car actually was the only car that actually worked in the shop during that time. <laughs> yeah. Cool. And you were working on it. Yeah. <laughs> nice. So, what do you what do you and Caleb talk about? Um, we talk about video games and what we play. We both play Clash of Clans. Um, he uh, plays on his Xbox, and I play on my PC. But we both play on our phones, and I play Solitaire and Clash Royale too on my phone. And he plays Paladins on his Xbox, I think and I play Paladins on my PC. Cool. Do you think you'll be able to use what you've learned here later on in life? Mm-hmm, yes. Yeah, in what way? Uh, because I want to become a mechanic like Caleb and work at Ford. That's sweet. So what's your favorite vehicle? Mustang GT. Do you know what Caleb's favorite vehicle is? The Ford F-150. Cool. Um, Your favorite vehicle is a Ford, too. It is a Ford. You're right. Um, so, it's been good chatting here with Isaac. Isaac's, again, one of many students here in the auto shop. And we, we get to see vehicles come in here each night of auto, and the students using them as a tool for learning and a tool for becoming closer with their mentors. We're going to hear from one of the mentors from the, the carpentry shop, Let's hear from Dave Hislop. Hi, my name is David. I've been with Organized Chaos a little over two years. I retired in 2017 uh, from a company in Burlington that I worked for for about 25 years. But I uh, was very, very impressed with the overall big picture of Organized Chaos and what uh, they had to offer to the community to the kids, to the other mentors and students that were around, and uh, thought it was such a worthwhile organization that I really wanted to be part of it. Worked with uh, a number of kids through the past little while, and uh, really enjoyed a lot the kids I've met. Uh, it's given us great opportunities to meet with um, other mentors as well, men I hadn't known, and uh, I would encourage you, if you are interested in any way in this sort of thing, uh, it's, it's really a worthwhile time, a really good time. Uh, the relationship with students is what, to my mind, is the most important. As a very proud grandfather of four, um, having people take an interest in my grandchildren, I try to express the same interest 
and their grandchildren and their children. And, and some kids are, are uh, easy to love and easy to accept and easy to bring in and have great interests in things. Others, not so much, but that's, uh, that's what life is out there. So, but it's really good to, uh, to build these relationships with the kids. Um, some of them are incredibly eager to learn. Uh, had a young man named Jordan come the first night he was here. Uh, we walked through about three different machines and by the end of the night he's saying, when can I learn the others? You know, just had an interest in doing things uh, and, and learning machinery, learning, learning the woodworking stuff that is here and uh, very keen kid that really, really wants to learn. Others are very artistic and others are very um, artsy in those ways and they want to do things that are a little bit different. My very first night here with, uh, with Organized Chaos, met a young lady named Esri. Esri has uh, become a good friend and uh, really enjoyed my time with her here in the shop. Um, very detailed, very artsy, and does a lot of things really well. Um, and I've really enjoyed that a lot. She'll always take something over the top. If you, you build something, she'll want to do a wood burning on it or whatever, you know, so it's, it's, that's really been nice. In the last two sessions, three sessions have been Jordan has come along. Jordan, his brother Andrew's here as well on the Thursday evenings and uh, really enjoyed my time with Jordan. He's the one I was saying is just so eager to learn. And that's really encouraging for us to have people like that, that want to, uh, want to learn, want to learn how basic life skills here or basic woodworking skills here rather, and, uh, and understand the equipment and understand the shop and, uh, and then execute very, very well, very careful, very detailed, very safe. And that's nice to see. Yeah. Uh, it's been good to meet parents of kids too. Now we don't have too much chance to do that, especially now in this day of COVID and separation and, and everything we have to do. Uh, they're technically not even supposed to come into the shop, but it's been good to when, it is a bit, when that is available to us again, it'll be really nice. Rather than parents waiting in a parking lot, come into the shop for five minutes and say hello and, and talk to you and, uh, and just see who their, their kids are hanging out with. And that's, that's, that's really nice. I really enjoy that. You meet some really, uh, really good people. Um, everybody who enters your life should be an encouragement to you. And this has been a real blessing to me. Uh, both the mentors, being with, being with other mentors, it's been really nice to, to meet other Christian men here in the community and the kids that have come along. Um, they've been great. They, they really have. And it's been, uh, while I've worked mostly with just a few of them, you see the others all around and it's really good to, to meet them and enjoy them and listen to their, uh, to their stories and where they are in their life. And it's good to see them grow. Um, like I said before, I'm a grandfather of four and you watch your own grandchildren grow and it's good to see these kids grow and learn and adapt all through the whole COVID thing. And, and you know, some of them have struggled with it and others have, have flourished. And it's good to see that, to see that going on. Um, and hopefully we can impact their lives in some way, some positive way and uh, encourage them in their in their journey as they as they make their way through life or start into careers and do that sort of thing i had a long discussion a couple of weeks ago with one on he wants to enter a trade which trade how does he want to do it where does he want to go and you know where, where does he want to be so it's really good to be able to uh, to discuss those things with the kids so overall it's been great i, I love love working with organized chaos and uh sean and dave and crew are all stellar people and really enjoy them a lot. So it's been good. We knew our students felt isolated. And as the world started to open up a little bit again, we knew that we needed to open up alongside for our students' sakes. 
And so we started making plans to open up with safety precautions in place, opening to one week of program for support students in July, opening Tuesdays and Saturdays in August. And then by mid-September, we had opened our full range of, uh, of programs for the students that, and mentors that were ready to return. At Organized Chaos, we do not want to stay stagnant or complacent. And so we constantly are making changes, as you've already heard the changes we made. And that is because we believe uh, God has given us this shop, these tools. He has put in our care the, these students and these mentors in order to take good care of them. If we, we are learning just the same as the students are learning and the mentors are learning. And therefore, if we don't take what we learn and implement it, we are, we are not doing them justice. And therefore, we continue to make changes to make organized chaos better, to serve you better, to make better use of everything that is involved with organized chaos. One of those changes that we've decided to implement this semester is, is taking time to stop, to stop uh, alongside the students in order to group up as mentors. And we have been taking the time to talk to each other, to see how it's going with each other and to learn from each other so we can intentionally, again intentionally, work with our students on a deeper level uh, as, we, as we help to push them forward in life and trade. And so just like last year at this time, I told you we were working organized chaos towards being uh, a duplicatable model. We continue to do that. And we, we continue to make changes to make organized chaos better. You've heard from a few of our awesome mentors here today. And so if you know somebody that could get involved with organized chaos, that means two more students that can get involved in organized chaos. And speaking of students, if you know of a student that would be a great addition to uh, organized chaos that we could get alongside and teach the trades as well as life skills, send them our way. And we want to use this video to tee up Giving Tuesday. On Giving Tuesday, I'm so excited that we get to give away a car to a family in need. If you or somebody you know has need of a vehicle, go to organizedchaos.org and apply there. Giving Tuesday is our day for the last number of years that corporate sponsors have multiplied the first month's donation of any new or increased donor, monthly donor, by 10. So if you start giving $10 a month, they'll give $100. And our monthly donors have never been more important than this year because when COVID hit, everything slowed down in terms of donations and and just everything in life seemed to slow down, but our monthly donors kept organized chaos going through that time of need and kept us going, kept us being able to connect with students virtually, but still connect with students, keep our shop going, and therefore we didn't lose this shop and now we're working with students again in here. And so if you think that could fit in into your life, come be part of organized chaos. We've missed you and we look forward to seeing you again. If you've been a long time follower of Organized Chaos or this just came across your feed for the first time, we want to thank you for being with us here. You can find out more uh, by following us or looking on our website. It's been an amazing year and we look forward to next year.